Hey what's up, it's Comic95, the Savior, and for this video I want to talk about foreigners being too hard on themselves. So this is going to be a very different video from probably anything that you've maybe not even just watched, but different from information that you've previously read or maybe even heard from me. So I don't want to contradict things that you might have heard from other people necessarily, or even some things that I've personally said in the past. There are exceptions to every rule, but I want to talk about the foreigners that we don't talk about so much, which are the people that come here and do follow the rules and do things the way that they're supposed to, and that are very hard on themselves, basically. So I feel like as foreigners, myself included, I've been guilty of this, we have been conditioned as minorities in Japan. And when I use the term minority, remember we're not in the US, I am a black woman, but we're in Japan. So now minorities include other Asians and in particular other white foreigners too. Keep in mind that black people make up the smallest percentage of foreigners in Japan and that's including people that are actually from Africa so I think that for a lot of my audience when you think of black you're just thinking of black Americans but really we're kind of on the more privileged side even in comparison um, <clears throat> excuse me even in comparison to other you know white and Asian foreigners etc due to language and of course um, I was about to say our nationality that all makes a huge difference so I'm not trying to start a war over which race what nationality is better than the other that's not the purpose in this video but rather to say that I'm referring to all of us, not just black people, not just white people. People see my video and like, oh, you're a black girl. You're talking about black people. No, no, no. We are the unicorns in Japan, especially black women. You hardly see us. So that is not what I'm referring to. And in particular, black American women um, on top of that. <laughs> so, yeah, I constantly see people from the media, um, random foreigners, people on YouTube, etc. We always focus and bash foreigners that don't follow the rules, people that don't obey and do things the way that they're supposed to, the Japanese way, that don't do things as the guidebook on how to be the perfect foreigner in Japan, the way that it tells you to do things. But in all honesty, the longer that I stay here, I see two different issues. For starts, I won't necessarily say the overwhelming majority of foreigners do follow these rules, but I believe that significantly more follow the rules than those that don't. And I will also add that I feel like it's not fair. We do not have the same high expectations or standards for Asian tourists, specifically Japanese people, when they come and visit our country. And I feel like a lot of the things that they do wrong get overlooked because they are Japanese and also because we don't care as Americans. Whereas in Japan, we've literally accepted being treated like third, not second, third class citizens. And like we have to be grateful for any basic act of kindness, any, you know, basic acknowledgement of our existence is basically enough for us, so to speak. It shouldn't take someone not sitting in priority seating. It shouldn't take someone standing at the exact marker, you know, waiting on the train to be treated as a decent human being. And I think it's really sad and yes, massive vibes when I see other foreigners attack other foreigners, basically, for breaking these rules. And I want to go deeper than that and not just talk about rules, but even language ability. So. I initially wanted to make this a separate video, and I will, but I really hate when I see other foreigners attack other foreigners, when I see foreigners attack foreigners basically, um, for not being able to speak Japanese well enough, or for not knowing rules, and come on guys, first of all, there's so much to learn Japanese wise, you can't expect everybody to be fluent in the language. We would see it as being problematic for Americans to go around, which some people do, but we can all agree that that's not right for Americans to go around and bash Hispanic people for not being able to speak English. We can also see why it's condescending to say to Hispanic people, wow, your English is so good. I have to go tell, you know, my best friend. Wow, you speak English so perfectly. Did Erica teach you? We see why those are backhanded and ignorant compliments. But when Japanese people do it, we have, we make up excuses. Oh, well, it's better than them treating you this way. It's better than them saying this about you. Why are we so satisfied with basic, small, little things? Why? I'm sorry, but someone breaking the rule 
unless it's something that's you know totally illegal like you know killing someone or harming them in some type of way is not an excuse to be racist to be prejudiced it doesn't justify these things even if a majority of people were to do something is it fair to judge an individual based off of what you stereotypically believe the majority to do and or be this brings me back to a tweet that I recently saw and I won't bother to you know first of all I don't have it on hand I'm too lazy to go get it and I don't know whether this person wants to be seen or known or whatever so since I don't have permission you can do your own research I came across a tweet in which this person who was half black was being questioned I believe by a police officer now I might have the details all messed up <laughs> it's been a minute but the problem that I had wasn't the video wasn't the profiling itself I was bothered by that of course but the part that got me the most was when I went to the comment section and I saw that the Japanese people there they didn't see the issue with the person being profiled for being you know of course the guy looks like a regular black guy to a Japanese person but clearly he was half black half Japanese he was biracial and that was talked about as being you know why he was being racially profiled so instead of acknowledging the fact that there's a problem with profiling people, the excuse was given that we do profile people in order to make decisions in day-to-day -day life, such as hiring people, and that people that do look and dress a certain way tend to, you know, be about a certain lifestyle, whether it be drugs or having, um, you know, weapons, etc. So don't get me wrong, I'm not going to play stupid as a black person and pretend like I don't understand what they're getting at. But let's put the shoe on the other foot. Would you say that it's fair for me as a black person to assume that during this pandemic that you have a virus, a very specific strain of virus, and avoid you and or harm you because, let's be real, where did this all start? Where did it come from? You would see why that's problematic, right? So how is it okay for you? You can judge me and assume that based off of my complexion, based off of my style, based off of my hair, based off of my clothing, that I am apparently carrying drugs, I am apparently breaking the law, I have a weapon, I'm here illegally, I'm doing some type of dirty under the table work. Not the same situation? Okay, let's switch it. How about something that we all see in any major city here in Japan? If you go to Tokyo, you go to Osaka, and even areas in Kyoto and Kobe, you will commonly see there are red light districts all throughout town. And there's generally at least two, if not three, within every major city in Japan. Things that are not legal and don't exist in the U.S. are basically legal here. They claim to not be legal, but it is. In Japan, prostitution is legal. They go under the umbrella of things like host clubs and you know the whole little soap land area whatever where you're just supposed to be paying for a girl to do things in the nude to you or wearing very skimpy little clothing. But let's be real, these women do have sexual relationships with people. They do more for money. They do inappropriate favors both at these venues and outside of them. The police are paid off and aware of it. They don't care. You commonly see prostitutes walking up and down the street in these areas. They are very easy to spot because of how they dress. No matter how cold it is, like right now, here I am, a Chicagoan. I was actually shivering the other day in 50 degree weather, which if you're from Chicago, that's a joke. That is spring weather for us. I saw a group of Japanese girls, four of them, walking together shoulder and shoulder, wearing big, you know, fur coats and dresses that were so short I could almost see their panties with six inch heels on, stilettos. Nobody bats an eye. They're walking right through the red light district in Osaka. Tons of people passing them. There are undercover cops around here. There are police around there. Do you see anybody stopping them? Anybody asking them, what are they doing? What's their job? Where are they going? Do they have a weapon? Do they have illegal money on them? Nope, nobody asks. I wonder why. Hmm. Would you keep that same energy when you see a Japanese person that looks the same way, that's doing the same thing? You don't. You don't even have that same energy in other countries. 
in America, especially in major cities and even in suburban areas, it's very common for Asian people to run brothels at massage parlors and sometimes even nail salons, offering what is known as a happy ending. I have a very good friend who is of Asian descent. She doesn't do this. She runs a legitimate massage parlor from her home. But what happens? She gets lots of, lots of messages from creepy white guys that assume that at the end of it, they can bribe her with some money and that she'll do sexual favors for them. It disgusts her. It creeps her out. She's a mother. She's a wife. It's offensive. Okay. But in all fairness, it's a thing. They've done stings in my hometown. Everybody's heard of this before. Would it be fair for me to assume that any Asian person that's running a massage parlor, any Asian woman that's living in the US, you must be a prostitute. You must be some sort of sex worker. You must be a porn star, something. Especially if you are a masseuse. Why would you choose that career field? How about if I were to see a Japanese woman wearing a kimono walking down the street in Chicago? She would get a ton of attention. What you say is fair for a police officer to stop her and assume because she's wearing, let's say she has on geisha, she's wearing, you know, a geisha outfit. She's dressed up like one. Would it be fair to assume that she's a prostitute? Or would you see that as profiling? It's profiling, right? It's not fair. You'd be offended by it. You would say it's racist. Okay. So do you not see why it's the same situation when you go after people that appear to be black or people with black style, such as, you know, dreadlocks or hip hop and street clothing? Do you see why that's problematic? If it were illegal to have braids or illegal to wear black fashion, then by all means, fine. I can't argue with that, but it's not. Therefore, what you're saying and doing is not fair. There's no justification for that. By those standards, we should be okay with white people beating up Asians because of the virus. Where did this virus start? Exactly, East Asia. It would be fair to assume that if you are Asian, because the majority of Asians are Chinese. Japan had a large amount of cases initially, and I still believe they do. They just don't test here. People are killing themselves, literally, committing suicide because they find out that they have it. Or simply staying at home to avoid the shame of having to tell people that they've been infected. I'm not even exaggerating. You can look this up yourself. It's fair game. I'm trying to protect my health. I want to live. I don't want to kill my family. I have the right to avoid you. It's racial profiling, isn't it? It would be seen as discriminatory, it's rude, it's unfair. Just because you look a certain way doesn't mean that you have the virus. Just because you are black does not mean you are a gangbanger, violent, a thief, a rapist, anything else. If we can understand that for you, why can't you get that for us? Japanese people are quick to point out in articles or in the news when they find a Russian girl that's working as, you know, an illegal escort or in a sham marriage. They're quick to point out the Chinese and Filipina girl. They're quick to point out the black guy. Sometimes they are right. What they're doing is and or was illegal. But you don't see them with the same energy trying to bust their own people. It's very easy to find sex workers in Japan, which, by the way, is not legal here. But it's borderline legal. It's only illegal when they don't want it to be. Interesting. All we're asking for is equality. Nobody's asking for a get out of jail, literally, free pass, but keep the same energy. If you're going to profile me, profile Japanese people too, which you don't do. And not on the same level as you do blacks and even white and other Asians. And before anybody says this, let me also say, I'm not speaking from personal experience. I've never in my life since I've been in Japan been stopped by the police. I've never had to show my ID, been carded, none of that type of stuff. And with that said, I'm also not dark skinned. 
I've never had dreads in my life. I haven't worn braids in I think maybe 13, maybe 15 plus years. That doesn't mean I have to pretend like because something hasn't happened to me, that it hasn't taken place to my friends or even strangers whose stories I've heard. You don't have to pretend to be blinded by something. You don't have to be black to understand our issues. These are not just black issues. It's for white people too. It is assumed that because you do not look Japanese that you must be up to no good. How is that okay? You don't think that is fair for people to make assumptions about you when you go abroad, when you choose to you know, immigrate, migrate to another country, but you justify it and believe that it's fair here. I saw so many disgusting Japanese comments defending it by, as I said earlier, saying, oh, well, you know, you have to profile people. That's how, you know, people get jobs, etc." This isn't profiling somebody based off of who has on the nicest suit or who came dressed for the job. You are out in your day to day life. It is not illegal to wear black fashion. It is not illegal to have a black hairstyle. This is not a job interview. This is your day to day life. You have the right and freedom to wear whatever you want to. I can go outside in my bra right now. And panties. My nipples are covered and so is my pussy and my asshole. And as long as that's the case, I am legally, technically permitted to wear what I have on. Now Japan has different indecent exposure rules, so maybe I do have to wear a little bit more. But okay, I can wear a barely there skirt <laughs> and a barely there shirt. It's legal. Now don't get me wrong, of course I'm gonna get negative attention. But, I have the right to wear this clothing. Japanese girls do it all the time. Now, they're, they don't walk outside literally in their bra and panties, don't get me wrong. I'm exaggerating here. But you see girls here wearing skimpy clothing all the time. Not just for the fun of it, but it's normally because they are a host, a escort, or AKA a prostitute. They work at a brothel, they're doing their own business. People do not pay them any mind. At best, some of my glance or look, that's it. They don't get harassed. But let a white or a black girl do it. People will be dialing, you know, 119 instantly here. The police will be on it. They will question you. What are you doing? Where do you work? Where's your, you know, where's your passport? They want to make sure they, you know, clear that scene, make sure, you know, you're actually here legally, make sure you're not doing any illegal work, but they will quickly look over a Japanese girl. They will quickly look over the group of wannabe thugs, wannabe gangster, Japanese guys, where you can smell marijuana, which is illegal in Japan, coming off of them. Nope, walk right past, nobody smells or sees anything. Black person that doesn't smell like weed, not doing anything suspicious, not hurting anyone, just walking, minding your own business. Oh, you look suspicious because you have dreads. How is that okay? Let's get the topic off of just black issues though, or black passing issues, biracial people, etc. Why do we make up excuses and justify the bad and racist things that happen here? Why can't we see that this would not be fair in our own country and that it's not even fair in Japan because they don't keep these same rules with their own people? Why are we satisfied with being given two separate rules? I hate to make this comparison, but it reminds me of like Jim Crow laws or being black back in the 30s and 20s in the US. You are over policed both on a social level and government level as a foreigner. Every little thing you do is questioned, judged, but this is not done for Japanese people. There was also a lot of talk with them complaining about, in the media, government officials, you guys, blaming the increase of coronavirus, coronavirus cases on foreigners, foreign people. Are you kidding me? The vast majority of this country is Japanese. And the ones who are not Japanese, again, are Asian. And thus, they would typically blend in with the average Japanese person. A lot of them do. 
So really, when the media is referring to foreigners, they're almost always referring to white and secondly, black people. What do you think saying this in the media does? It causes people to become, as you guys love to use this word, xenophobic. Now this word comes in handy. This is a case of legitimate xenophobia. Or realistically, once again, synonym, can't go around it. Acts of prejudice, stereotyping, makes people want to avoid you even more than they already do. Makes people judge and question you even more than they already do. So it's not the fact that you have literal prostitute houses open. Host clubs, brothels, soap land, bars. It has nothing to do with those being open. Live houses, concerts, crowded trains, crowded malls, crowded cafes. Nothing to do with that. Not the go-to travel campaign. It's those dirty white and black foreigners. God darn it. It stinks to them. We're the reason why the cases are increasing. Because Japanese people are so perfect. They wear their masks. They never have them under their nose. They use hot water to wash their hands. They don't pick in their nose. They don't dig wax out of their ear in public and rub it on handrails. They don't pull wedgies out in public without washing their hands. It's definitely not Japanese people. They're so perfect, so clean. It must be those darn foreigners. There aren't even that many foreigners still in Japan. The majority of them left and went back to their home country since this pandemic got started. And the ones that are here are mostly veterans, people that have been here for years and were comfortable with staying here amidst the pandemic and lockdown. They weren't afraid of being trapped in Japan. This has become their home. Most people had already been here for over a year, if not multiple years, and knew what they were in for, have no problem wearing a mask, are better hand washers than you are. But yes, let's blame us, while simultaneously keeping nightclubs open, keeping bars open. There's no social distancing in Japan. At best, they might have it where there's one seat, one seat kept open. Do you know how close the chairs are in Japan? The distance between you and the seat next to you is at best a foot, if even that. That does not solve anything. Wearing dirty old masks don't solve anything. If you're constantly touching and taking off your mask, it doesn't help anything. You're spreading germs. I can literally go on a whole rant on this. I've already made videos talking about that. And guess who got upset? Foreigners, weeboos that kiss Japan's butt and don't want it to be criticized. As well as, of course, Japanese people that want to believe their country and their people are so perfect. They're angels. They don't do anything wrong. Do you see how that's a problem? Imagine if in the U.S., which a lot of certain people that belong to certain groups and parties do, but we're not going to get on that. Imagine if in the U.S. it were acceptable, though, to blame Asian people for the pandemic. Not Chinese people, as in people that live, born, and were raised in China, but literally Asian people, all, the entire community in the U.S., people that were born, raised, second, third generations, or people that immigrated, you know, 50, 40 years ago, and said, well, you know, the virus is out of control in Los Angeles because there's way too many Asians here. If they would just wash their hands and stop eating bat, we could keep down the cases. You would be hysterical. You would lose it. You would say, how dare they? But it's okay in a country where there are not that many foreigners. It's okay to blame it on white and black people. Hmm. Very interesting. And some of you stupid foreigners are in agreement with it. You're like, yeah, I saw this white guy not wearing a mask. Out of how many Japanese people that didn't have one on? Seriously? We get upset and anal over foreigners breaking rules, like sitting in priority seating, or talking loud on trains, or walking while eating. And don't get me wrong, as a foreigner, as a minority in the U.S. too, I know the double standard. And unfortunately, I do try to follow it so that nobody has any excuse. I don't want to give racists any reason to justify their thinking or their actions. Just to prove I am not your stereotype. And to prove that you're stupid. Because even although I do follow your rules and I'm not like that, you're still not going to like me. I'm just being myself. It's how I was raised. I'm not trying to impress anybody. 
But okay, as someone that does generally follow these rules, God forbid the exception when you do choose to sit in a priority seating or when you do answer your phone on the train. They lose it. They become livid. But it's okay for Japanese people to get on the train. They can be drunk. They can vomit all over you. They can touch you. But it's fine. They're Japanese. Nobody cares. Nobody says anything. Let a Chinese person get on the train talking to their family. Let an American answer a phone call. You'll get huffing, puffing, stumping, sighing. Someone might even be bold enough to ask you to shut up. <laughs> Complain right to your face. It's okay when they do it, but it's not okay when you do it. There's nothing wrong with sitting in priority seating when there's no one waiting for a seat. You have Japanese people that will fake sleeping, that will look down, pretend to be on their phone, put in headphones, do anything to avoid the guilt of that old lady standing and waiting for a seat. But God forbid a foreigner do that. God forbid a foreigner sit there when there is no crowds on the train, when there's plenty of seating in the other areas. People will get upset with you. You do realize the way priority seating works is you're supposed to give up your seat in the event that someone that needs it gets on board. Not to mention, people here normally have so much pride, they won't sit down even if you offer it to them. They'd rather the seat already be open, then they'll sit. But if you get up, they can't tell if you're getting up because you think they stink or they're dirty or you don't want to be next to them. Or they see it as insulting because you're saying that, you know, you're old, you need the seat. It's a stupid mind game that they don't follow. But we as foreigners, we do you know, their dirty work and we spend our whole lives attacking other people. Telling them what they need to work on, telling them what rules they need to follow. Even with Japanese language. Japanese people spend their whole lives learning English. English is everywhere. It's on signs, it's on the food that you buy, they watch Netflix, they listen to our you know, music. They watch our movies. Most Japanese people prefer American stuff to Japanese. I don't mean it in the way that some of you little K-pop fans like Korean music. No, no, no. I mean, they listen to Japanese music like how you listen to K-pop, meaning that it's the reverse. They hear 90 to 95% American media English all day long and seldom listen and watch Japanese stuff. The average Japanese person does not have a favorite TV show here. If you ask them what they like to watch, it's going to be something from Netflix in English. I guarantee you. You ask them who their favorite artist is, 9 out of 10 people will name an American artist. Favorite actor, 9 out of 10, give you an American. You'll get that exception to the rule that it'd be like, oh, Rad Whips or Wanima, whatever. But that's why I said 9 out of 10. They prefer our stuff. They are forced to learn English, not just in school, but they need to have a high enough level to go to a good elementary school, a good junior high school, high school and college, and get this, to get jobs that don't even require English. Imagine if in the US, you had to be proficient in Spanish in order to work a good job. That's how English is here. Some companies you can't even apply to in Japan if you didn't go to a prestigious university. To go to a prestigious university, you have to be fluent in English. Even if you have an accent, aren't perfect, as long as you can read and write semi-fluently, that's enough. You can't, you can forget it. You're not good enough. It's not one company, not one school, not one place. This is a entire country, culture, where English is seriously focused on. There is literally no logical reason for a foreigner to learn Japanese unless they know in their heart that they plan to live and stay here forever. Then in that case, of course you should. For your own good, you should want to be able to hear, understand, and know what's going on. You should want to be able to communicate with your in-laws, with your children, with their teachers, with their daycare providers. Totally understand that. But to use that as an excuse to justify racism, to justify mistreatment, do you hear yourself? Japanese is not a good language to learn realistically. It's fun to learn, it's a hobby, but it's not useful outside of Japan. You have very few opportunities to use Japanese abroad. 
the only option you have is essentially translation work, teaching people Japanese, or teaching Japanese people English, which normally they don't want you to use Japanese when teaching them anyway. That's the way that it works. Is that valuable? No. But what is valuable? English. English can be used in every single country in the world. It is the language of the world. America is the most powerful, richest country in the world. People want to live here. People want to travel here. People want to work here. People die every day to do those things. People sell themselves and others to be American citizens, whether it be legal or illegally. I cannot say the same thing about Japan. Not only is that so, but to learn Japanese, you're required to spend a lot more time learning things that you don't already know. Japanese people already know the alphabet. That's a huge time saver right there. For us, we have to learn two phonetic alphabets that require complicated stroke orders and kanji. What working adult has time for that? We're not exposed to Japanese media besides porn. <laughs> And for some of us that like anime, fine. You can't learn how to speak properly from either of those things. It's an unfair comparison. For most of us, you just became interested in Japan and Japanese once you became a teenager or later. For them, whether they like English or not, they've been forced to be exposed to it since they were babies. They have to learn it, have to study it. So that Japanese guy that's like, oh, I went to the U.S. for three months. Yeah, but you studied it in school for 10 years and four years in university. And they'll tell you, oh, I learned English. You should learn Japanese. Who's to say that you want to live here forever? Everyone doesn't learn the same rate, the same pace. Everyone doesn't have the money, the time, the ability, the effort to put into that. Not knowing Japanese is not an excuse to be a racist, an excuse to be mean, to be rude, to be prejudiced, to treat people unfairly. That is beyond stupid. It makes no sense, even if Japanese were the easiest language in the world. You cannot justify mistreating foreigners because, well, they should learn Japanese. The majority of foreigners that you see in your day-to-day -day life have no long-term plans in Japan. Let's emphasize that. The majority of foreigners in Japan do not plan to be here long-term. And when I say long-term, I mean for more than a couple of years. Most people that come to Japan come and leave within the first year. If they stay after that, they will leave after their visa expires and won't be renewing it. If they get divorced, many of them choose to go back to their home country. Same thing goes if they can't or don't get married. Or can't or don't graduate. It doesn't make sense to waste the time and the money to do that. And if you're here working full time, it's difficult to fit in time to study and learn Japanese. You've had your whole life to work on English. When you come to our country, we don't justify mistreating you by saying, well, you should speak English better. And when people say that, we criticize them for it because that's not right. But for some reason, it seems like both foreigners and Japanese people don't see that. Somebody complains about being mistreated, getting poor service, not being understood. Well, you should work on your Japanese. Well, you shouldn't have been on your phone. Don't get me wrong, again, follow the rules, do what you're asked to do. Basic assimilation things are fine. I'm not gonna argue with that. If the rule is to not talk on the train, you shouldn't do it. But my point is, keep that energy. If you're going to get mad at a foreigner for doing it, get mad at the Japanese person too. Don't just be upset with the foreigner for doing it. And most of you are not. Your anger and hate for the person doing that is because you've been conditioned by Japanese people to not like that. Same thing goes for issues with other Asians. If you look at the comments on nearly any article that has to do 
with Japan dealing with other countries, you will see that the foreigners there have no brain or opinions of their own. They're literally feeding the same information into these comment sections that Japanese people have put into their minds. For example, when the topic of comfort women comes up, people literally are in agreement with Japan on their handling of that, which is very interesting to me. Because while Japanese people do not like other countries talking about comfort women, aka sex slaves, because that term was also coined by them, not wanting to acknowledge what really happened, they get upset when countries talk about that. But nobody has a problem with Japan talking about the bombings, the nuke, the nuke bombings that took place at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It's okay for them to continuously talk about this every year. America doesn't get mad at them for it, we understand. Trust me, I'm not trying to cap for racist white Americans, but let's be real, Japan did start it. If they did not bomb Pearl Harbor, none of this would have happened. They did it to themselves. And not only did they not surrender after the first one, they refused to do so, which caused them to get bombed twice. Is that what gets talked about? No. Instead, it's evil Americans, evil military base. But as soon as North Korea starts launching missiles, they want to buddy up and huddle up next to the U.S. Y'all don't want to hear that side of it, though. But you guys are in agreement with Japan when they complain about the U.S. bases. You all are in agreement with Japan when they complain about comfort women. You see how you all don't have that same energy? Some of you are American. So it's fine if you want to feel that way. But only if it were balanced. It's okay for them to judge, talk about, belittle, stereotype you and your country and your language and your people. It's okay for them to box and categorize you. But they don't like it when you do it to them. They're aware of stereotypes. If you talk to Asians about being typecasted, stereotyped in media as being nerdy, scrawny, weak, yellow cab, they are completely familiar with that. And they don't like it. But their assumptions of what white and black people are like, especially black people, come straight from the media and they don't see anything wrong with it. What? I cannot tell you how many crazy things I've read. That can go on forever. But the last thing I want to talk about is just, you know, just kind of just to recap everything. Just think about it. Why are we satisfied with mediocrity? At least they're letting me live here. At least they're not shooting me. We've accepted racial discrimination with housing here, with jobs here, with eating at restaurants here. Golly, it would be first page on the newspaper in the U.S. Top news story. Imagine if a restaurant owner said, sorry, but we can't serve you. We don't speak Chinese to a Japanese person. That would be problematic. How do you know that they don't speak English? Do you need to be able to speak English in order to order food? You can just point at the menu. The waiter can read. They know what the menu is. What? If Americans were to decide we don't want to rent to Asians during this pandemic because we're afraid that you might bring your virus with you. And we don't want that on our property. Or we don't want people offering happy endings or watching Yaoi late at night and disturbing the peace. That would be racist. That would be problematic. You would be angry for them. But it's okay for Japanese people to say, oh, you know, we don't want foreigners to live here because you're not going to pay your bills. You're going to dirty up the place. You're going to have wild, crazy gaijin parties. We can't serve you at our restaurant because you're not going to know the rules. You're going to be loud. You can't speak Japanese. Too many issues. We don't accept credit cards. Bitch, I got yen in my pocket. What? <laughs> How do you know what my language ability is? Even if I could not speak a lick of Japanese, I have a smartphone. We have dictionaries. What type of crap excuse is that? They would be in tears if they went to the US and were told that they couldn't 
eat at a place they wanted to go to, if they were told they couldn't rent a place they wanted. Not because of their credit, not because they don't have money, but simply because you don't look like the rest of us. You would feel their pain. You wouldn't say, oh, well, it's our country, it's America. We have the right to do that. But in Japan, you guys agree with them. You're like, well, it's Japan. It's their country, it's their restaurant, it's their apartment. They have the right to choose who lives there. Interesting. If you don't get mad at Japanese people for breaking the rules on the train, don't get mad at foreigners. You don't get mad at Japanese escorts, don't get mad at foreign escorts. Same energy, just be fair. There's nothing threatening about dreads, just like there's nothing threatening about your horrible boxed haircut that you have that does not fit your fat round big head and face. <laughs> It would not be fair for me to assume that because you have, you know, blunt cut bangs that you offer happy endings. So don't assume that because I have dreads that I'm a drug dealer, gang banger, or violent criminal of some kind. If you're going to do that with everyone that has dreads, then okay, fine. Still wrong. But okay, at least we're being fair here. But let's be real. It's not just the hairstyle. It's not just the fashion. It's the complexion. It's the belief that you are not talking to a half, you know, Japanese person. You saw a black person. That's what drew your attention to them. That's the problem. Race does play an issue for the Japanese people that think it doesn't. That, oh, it's just hairstyles, just whatever. I can say it's just profession. A lot of masseuses offer blowjobs. But okay, am I going after white and black masseuses? No, just the Asian ones. My actions show you what I'm really looking for, what I'm really doing. You can profile people when you're applying for a job, sure. You don't want a bum working for your company or someone strung out on drugs. But you cannot profile somebody minding their own business, living their day-to-day -day life, walking through a train station. You cannot get upset with somebody quietly talking on the phone in English when you don't get upset when you see that salary man answer that uh, phone call on the train. I see Japanese people talk on the train way more than I see foreigners. And normally when foreigners talk, it's because a Japanese person started talking first. But y'all not ready for that conversation. Too busy kissing Japan's butthole. I'm just asking for fair treatment. That's all we want, all we've ever wanted. Don't play a game to pretend like you can't understand, don't see what's wrong with that. And as a foreigner, if you're agreeing with Japanese people and taking their side, you look stupid because they don't support you the same way. They don't support your country, your race, your language, nothing. They will throw you under the bus in a heartbeat. You are literally doing their dirty work. You're playing massa, literally. You look stupid. It's a double standard. So I'm done. I can make a three hour video off of this. I will leave it here. And yeah, you know, agree to disagree, whatever you want to call it. But like I said, if you're going to profile people, do it for everyone. You're going to judge people, do it for everyone. They don't do that. They won't do that. The majority of foreigners here are not bad people. They're not people that don't follow rules, break rules, can't do whatever. Not being able to speak Japanese is not synonymous with being a bad gaijin. Just like not speaking English in the U.S. does not make you a bad citizen. That makes zero sense. Everyone makes mistakes when in a different country, in a different culture. Stop allowing Japanese people or stupid wannabe Japanese foreigners to convince you that you are the problem. Because I can assure you and guarantee you that you're not. Japan doesn't want to deal with their issues with rape, molestation, child abuse, domestic violence, suicide, nothing. Alcoholism. 
lack of support for single mothers, daycare, but they love to tell you how perfect they are of a country, how horrible foreigners are making things. Anytime something goes bad, they blame it on foreigners. It's never the Japanese people's fault. Virus, foreigners. Something's dirty, must be a foreigner that did it. Noisy place, it's because of all the foreigners. They don't have that same energy, that same anger towards their own people. Please think before you let them brainwash you at the double standards that they have. Please stop repeating the garbage that you hear from your Japanese friends, your spouse, your co-workers, etc. Japan is not some perfect holier-than-thou place. Japanese people break rules all the time, much more than foreigners do. They don't follow a lot of the rules that we make for ourselves. The only rule that I've consistently seen people follow here is not sticking their chopsticks in their food. <laughs> that is literally the only rule. Everything else that you all get really anal over and really worried about. Oh, you said this word wrong. Oh, you didn't hold your napkin properly. All these little rules that you care so much about, a lot of them aren't even aware of. You're reading too much into this culture. You're reading too much into books that were written by foreigners or Japanese people that weren't even born and raised in Japan, but are really American or British. Stop putting up with mediocrity. Stop being grateful for being treated like a human being. You all will literally accept a Japanese person cursing you out for sitting in a priority seat. And instead of saying, hey, that's a double standard. There was literally a Japanese guy right next to me. Why are you getting mad at me? Instead, you all see it as a learning lesson or a lesson learned. Wow, I shouldn't have sat in that seat. I'm such a bad gaijin. I shouldn't have answered that phone call. I shouldn't have been drinking my matcha tea while walking. I made everyone so angry. But they turned a blind eye to the Japanese person doing that. So whatever, I feel sorry for you guys that you feel that way, that you've become such sellouts for your own race, for your own country, for even your gender to try to assimilate with Japanese people. You can assimilate and follow rules without being blinded by BS. Follow the rules, do what you're supposed to do, sure. But make sure those same rules are expected to be followed by other people and know the difference between a legitimate rule and legitimate racism. Language ability does not make you a bad person to not have it. Your nationality does not make you a bad person. Your hairstyle, your clothing does not make you a bad person. And I hope that you will learn and see that too, just as I hope that Japanese people will and do. So I'm done. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you enjoyed it, please leave me a like, leave a comment down below as well. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Comic95, as well as at me on Snapchat at Comic the Savior, and like my Facebook page as well. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope that you will check out another one too. Bye.